Hey guys, I'm actually shooting like video part two. So if you saw my last video, you're probably thinking, is this a duplicate? No, this is part two. Um, just to tell you how much I care about you, how important what I say is. <laughs> I can't even say that seriously. I haven't even eaten my breakfast yet. And you know, after my morning cardio, I'm freaking hungry. But I wanted to say a couple of things. So I talked about in my um, last video, because you guys have been asking, you know, what's my new program or what's my new focus? What am I doing and how am I liking it? Um, so as I mentioned to summarize, <clears throat> to take the 10 minutes I said last time and summarize it into a minute, I'm doing ultimate yogi at night and or uh, there might be days, <clears throat> excuse me, like say this evening, if I go to Corey's class at 4.30, or I know I'm going to Corey's class on Monday. <sighs> Have a hiccup. So if I go to his class, I would not do that day's ultimate yogi or whatever. You know, I'm not doing it like, oh, I've got to follow the program and the diet exactly, because I'm not doing it like it's a program to get those results. It's just those classes are exactly what I need to be able to have my yoga experience as much as possible at home, and I love it. So combining that with my regular cardio every single day in the morning, making sure I shoot for um, 500 calorie burn. That's what I'm shooting for. Because what I was doing a little bit before was cardio, we were always aiming for cardio two times a day. I do not like the way this hat is inside. I don't know why it's bothering me so much. Um, but you know, uh, we would do cardio. <clears throat> I do cardio in the morning and then like another cardio at night. But a lot of times my cardio at night, if I was just doing a cardio and not hitting the gym, you know, sometimes it would be like a 250 calorie burn or, you know, a half an hour. Um, so it wasn't that I was getting, you know, two hours of cardio, but in that, I don't know, we'll test this out and we'll see how my body reacts to it. Um, just my body seems to be reacting very well after just like a week, week and a half, uh, two weeks of kind of really getting back into the swing of things. And this, this week being the first full ultimate yogi week. Um, I don't, I feel like I don't want to look at doing ultimate yogi every night as like, oh, that's not my workout. But let's be honest, sometimes it's hard when you're used to hardcore weight training and kind of pretty intense cardio. It's hard to, I guess the word I'm looking for is um, categorize maybe or qualify. It's hard for me to put a label on the yoga um, because A, here's the deal, on one hand, it's intense, okay? And, and anybody that does yoga, and, and you know what I'm talking about, you're working every muscle in your body, it is intense. As I mentioned in the last video, every time I do Ultimate Yogi, I'm covered in sweat. Um, it, it's, it's working my arms, it's working my core, it's working my lower body. I mean, it's hitting everything. But sometimes, you know what I'm saying? When you're figuring out a plan for the week, it's hard for me to say, oh, well that's cardio. Is it cardio? Is it weights? What do I qualify that as? So I, we're going to see. I'm going to test this out as I go forward. You know, 108 days I've committed to doing the yoga every single day in the evenings and then cardio in the morning like I've been doing and four days of weight training. So we'll see. We'll see how that affects my body. I seem to think it's going to be fine. Yoga to me seems like a treat. It's obviously an intense workout. Um, I don't think, and, and, and I think that maybe what I could do is just if, if I feel like I need to jack up my cardio during the day or with my weight training, I'll do it. So that's the cool thing, people. I finally got to the point where I don't have this panic attack of like, oh my God, I've got to do this right and I've got to do it perfect and I've got to see results in the first three hours or I'm going to quit and freak out and start analyzing things all over again. No, I've become um, much more comfortable with understanding my body, knowing what works for me and, and being able to evaluate if this is good or bad. A couple of things that I wanted to tell you guys that I am starting to do kind of just throughout my day that I think are things that a lot of you guys that are starting could do um, because a lot of you guys are like, you know, how do I go? You know, Kelly, you work, you do two times a day. You know, I don't have time for that. Or um, I work 18 hour days or 16 hour days or whatever. First of all, okay, here's what I'm gonna say to most of that because I'm running a startup. I work pretty much like seven days a week, all the time. I make time for what I want to do, and I'm still always behind at work because 
that's the nature of my business, you know? There's just always some stuff. It's a matter of what you want to make time for. All I'm going to say is usually when I'm talking to somebody that says they have no time, I bet you I can ask them what their favorite television show is and they'll tell me it's like CSI or um, American Idol or some dance show or whatever. You know what's funny? I could cancel my cable right now because I find myself not watching TV at all. I don't know about you guys. I'm doing more of my I do my yoga at night, and then after that, I want to read. Like, I actually have so much stuff I'm reading now with, you know, uh, reading on yoga, and, and, and I'm making sure that I'm also, um, you know, reading for pleasure, and doing my business reading during the day. I don't need to sit and watch TV. If you're going to sit and watch TV, or if you think that you don't have enough time to do things, there's, there's things that you can be doing throughout the day to add a little bit here, a little bit there, and all of these things... I think it'll A, start to get your mind in paying attention to your body. Um, the more that I do this yoga, and the more that like, when I went for a massage this week, and she always, after she finishes the massage, she'll tell me, you know, oh my God, you know, your legs are really, like, she can feel my muscles. She can feel what's working. She can, she you know, said last time, she's like, your shoulders are really, You've been working your shoulders, haven't you? They're really intense. She said this past time that I've stretched out my shoulders a lot more. They're a lot more pliable and flexible, which I attribute to yoga and doing, you know, so much more stretching, right? And and balancing out as opposed to just hitting the weights and, and giving up. But she's able to see the progress that I'm doing. But one of the things that yoga really teaches you is awareness of where you have imbalances, right? Those of you that do this, um, already know and and she said my massage girl um, who's amazing um, she said one of the things she noticed about my legs is that my right uh, my right quads are a lot stronger than my left which makes sense I favor my right leg like right now I'm, I'm standing on my right leg and putting my left leg out to the side she said your left quad and your left hamstrings are much more she said your left leg is not as strong and yet it's more um, flexible with your hip flexor and your hamstring. So she said, you need to work on stretching more on your right side and doing extra work on your left side and focusing on how you're standing throughout the day. And I've told you guys this, there's two things about my feet that are weaknesses that I need to work on in, and which cause, these weaknesses cause imbalances, okay? When I first met Corey, he could tell that the reason my neck had become so jacked was the way I was sleeping, but also he's like, look, your left leg is longer than your right leg and my left leg is double jointed, so I always lean back. And, and then because of that, because leaning back on my double jointed leg makes me feel uncomfortable, that's probably why I favor and lean on my right, which means that that can jack up your hips, it can jack up your posture, and then you have all of these imbalances. I was sitting having a discussion with my mom the other day, and I was looking at these flip-flops she's wearing. By the way, my mom's doing great. She hits her last moment of uh, her last session of radiation is on Monday and she's done. Her hair's growing back. She's in, in great condition. So thank you for continuing to ask about her. But I was sitting and I was talking to her and I was looking at how she was standing and I'm like, mom, look at how you're standing in those flip-flops. And she had been, now she's like most people, she pronates, right? I supinate. So she pronates, but her one thing was, was coming so far in and I pointed it out to her and she was like, oh my gosh, you're right. So I told her one of the things that I was doing, when I'm standing in my kitchen, I'm waiting for like my eggs to cook or my oatmeal, I will stand just on one leg. So try to stand on one leg. Make sure that your feet are flat. If you're uh, pronating, try to balance to the outside. If you supinate like me, try to balance to the inside. And just balance, even if you just lift your right leg up one inch, two inches, start to balance. Try to see if you can close your eyes, move your, move your shoulders up. There's, move your shoulders up, move your arms up. Um, those are things that you can do just walking around your office. Um, if you're in the lunchroom, if you're at home, start to, to balance and then you'll start to pay attention to how, you know, what muscles am I using and, and where are my um, inefficiencies and how I stand and how I balance. You just become so much more aware and then it becomes something that you want to work on all the time. My core is something that I, remember I told you guys when I met with Valerie Waters like a year or so ago and she's like, your core is so weak because I avoided doing all of these ab exercises and core exercises when this perimenopause weight hit me because I didn't want to look at the pudge I had on my stomach. I need to get over that because I can't just assume it's going to disappear. So one of the things I'm doing now, I take my bow slides, these are the black ones, and I'm putting them under my pillow in my bed so that when I go to bed every night, 
I know I'm going to take these out and I'm going to start doing some core exercises right before bed. Why not? I think that you can figure out little ways, wherever it is, to squeeze in just a little bit of fitness. Even if it's just balance or wall push-ups or a wall sit, it could be something fun. Um, but those are ways that you can fit in something. If you think that your schedule in your life is so prohibitive to working out, first of all, you're kidding yourself. But second of all, these are areas where even if you are finding the time to work out, fit in these little pieces of fitness and, in, and improving yourself, improving your posture, improving the way that you stand, and you're going to benefit from it. Try it out.